everyone, it's Miss LaRose. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use paper to make a sculpture. You're going to need scissors, glue, paper strips, a piece of paper to be the base of your sculpture, and you might want to have some markers or crayons to decorate your paper strips as well. I have some pre-decorated strips here, some solid colored strips, and also strips that I got from the paper from the shaving cream video. I'm first going to create a paper strip that has a 3D element by wrapping a strip up into a circle and letting it create a curly spiral. The tighter you wrap it, the more it will spiral. Now this is going to be able to kind of spring up off of my base paper, which I'm going to glue it onto, but first I need to create a tab or a spot that I know is going to hold the glue. Now a lot of these will like to pop up, so you're going to want to hold them down and press them for a while. This strip I'm going to fold back and forth over top of itself, just over and over again. I'm not really making it nice and neat, I'm just folding it back and forth and pressing it down and it creates kind of a zigzaggy, crinkly looking paper. And I just want to place it near my first 3D paper. And I like to layer them as well as make sure that they are glued down before I move on to the next step. If you don't, it will pop up just like it did there. So hold it down and you want to keep holding it until it doesn't come off anymore. This project requires a little bit of patience when it comes to the gluing. So now I'm gluing down the other side, pressing that in place, letting the spiral overlap on top of the green paper strip, and then I can create some other types. For this one I'm going to create a hill just by folding tabs on the end and then gluing those tabs flat near each other so that the paper will bend upward and it makes a curve that looks kind of like a hill. This one I can put glue on both of them and hold them down at the same time. I also like some of my strips to twist through one another, so this one I'm kind of placing before I glue it down to figure out how I want it to twist through this piece. And once I figure out how I want it to go, I'm just going to glue it down and hold it in place so that it pops up off the page. But I didn't really change the strip in any way, I didn't fold it or twist it or anything, I just kept it straight and then it's curving because of the spots where I'm gluing it down. I'm forcing the ends near each other, so then it creates a popped up area. Please remember to keep holding these pieces down so that they don't pop up with the wet glue on them. This is one of my favorite things to do. I'm matching these two strips up at one corner with one stretching side to side, one going up and down, and then folding them back and forth over top of one another. So I'll fold up, then to the right, then down, then to the left, and I just keep doing that until I run out of paper. And that kind of creates a boxy type spring formation with these two papers that are being woven back and forth together. When I get to the end, the pieces don't match up entirely perfect, so I'm going to glue the last piece down following that same pattern, gluing the green down, holding it in place, then I'm going to glue down the white and fold and hold that in place as well. And that's going to finish off this little stack so that it doesn't come undone on the bottom. But I also have to do it on the other side and just glue down the first two tabs here. But you can see the rest of it is pretty springy. 
and it looks pretty cool. I think that this is probably the most fun part of this project is to make these. If you want to just make a bunch of these and stick them on there, that might look cool even if you don't have a lot of other different ones glued down. So it's all springy and fun to play with. I think it looks great. Now I'm going to just add a couple other types of 3D paper strips. This one I tied in a loose knot. I'm just going to glue that one down the way that it is in this weird little knot shape. I'm not pulling it too tight though because that would rip the paper. So it's just a loose knot, almost pretzel-like. So there's just a little bit of glue on both sides and then I can press and hold those down in the spot where I want it to stay. And that gives it the 3D effect because the paper is wrapped around itself. Next, I'm going to show you how to make a heart on top of a tower. First, we're going to make the heart by folding a strip of paper in half and then putting a little bit of glue in between the fold so that it will hold the paper together in a heart shape. When you do this, you're going to want to let that glue in the crease dry before we do the next step because if it's not dry, it will pull the heart apart and it won't look like a heart. So what I did is I pinched it and then I set the glue bottle on top of it for a few minutes just to make sure that it was 100% dry. When I knew that it was dry, I opened it up and folded it out to create the heart shape and then glued the two bottom pieces together so that they would hold that heart shape. Once the ends are glued together, you are going to need to hold it until it dries or put something on top of that edge. I also folded the end a little bit to help add more structure so that it would be more supported. If you don't do that, then sometimes it will just pop apart because there's some tension created from the top part being bent back together at the bottom. They want to be separate. So until the glue is dried, they will still try to separate. Now that the heart is done, we're going to take another strip and fold it in half to create the tower piece. And it's very similar to how I made the heart where we fold the strip in half and then pinch the ends together so that the two pieces on the crease stay together. That is also going to need to dry before we do the next step. So I'm pressing that together, waiting for it to dry. And then I'm going to glue both of those ends down so that it looks like sort of a tower with the point of the crease in the center. And then I can glue my heart onto the top of that point. This needs to be held in place until it dries, otherwise the heart will fall off. So position it how you want it, glue it on, and then pinch it in place until the heart stays because the glue is dry. For the rest of the strips that I'm going to be adding 3D folds and curves to, I just want you to watch the video and try to come up with your own versions or experiment with how to make the paper look more 3D. I don't want to give too many directions because I want you to try to discover how to make the 3D paper on your own. If I do all of it for you, I feel like it's not going to give you a lot of chances to discover your own ways of doing things. And getting to do things your own way can be very helpful to your brain because it helps you figure out problem solving and creativity. 
because I want you to come up with your own popping out, curving, zigzagging, twisting, lots of different ways to do stuff. So I still have examples in this video, but I'm not going to talk about them that much. I just want you to watch them, see if you can recreate it or invent your own. Fill your paper base up as much or as little as you want and you can decide when it is done. I like mine this way, so this is what mine looks like when it's finished. I hope you give this a try. It's pretty fun.